All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to give a pretty entertaining email that was sent from a subscriber. That's from a guy who sounds like he's probably in his early 50s, and he shares his story from years ago when he was 38 years old and found out his wife was cheating. And not just with one guy, no, 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 that's never enough, with multiple guys. Problem is, is that he was in a no-fault divorce state, and so what is he going to do? Lose half his stuff to her. You're going to see that he had, at that time, millions of dollars. How he got that millions of dollars, I don't know what he did for a living, but he obviously did very well. So he then decided to go through a plan to make sure she didn't get a dime of his money and also raiding the joint accounts. Now, before I go into the story, I will say a couple things. Number one, there was a story I did a few weeks ago about a guy who did something kind of similar to this. Sold his construction company, liquidated all their assets, and got out of Dodge, took a hell of a loss to make sure she didn't get anything. And a lot of people wondered that story was true. This story is similar. And two, I will say this, that I always give people the benefit of the doubt. They send stories in, there are things about these stories that sound a little off, but I give them the benefit of the doubt in case, hey, you never know. And that's what we have here. I'll let you guys determine whether this is accurate or not. But before I do, before I go into the story, I'm going to read a quick email from a guy thank you for my channel and how it's definitely helped him with his divorce and getting his life back on track. This guy says here, hello, SSM. I just want to say thank you for you helping me through a very difficult time. I'm getting over a divorce as she had filed. I was the biggest beta simp possible. I had no clue. I naively assumed that my ex knew what she wanted <clears throat> and I could do what she asked, even when I knew I was, it was wrong or dumb. I was like a blind drunk person wanting to drive a car and saying if that's uh, what you want, go sure, go ahead. I saw a therapist and he told me that I was the sweetest client he ever had. Sweetest client meant that you were like uh, just setting yourself up to be taken advantage of by one of these a-hole women. I think he chose that word carefully as it had a big effect on me. Maybe someday I'll write a longer email with all the mistakes. Your channel has been extremely helpful for me. You point out RP gender issues without just blaming everything on women. I deserve lots of smacks for my behavior. You've also given me hope and encouragement. I hit the gym hard. Over the last year and a half, I've lost over 50 pounds of fat, gained 25 pounds of muscle, and I got a six-pack. When I see people for the first time in a while, I get some variation of, holy shit, you're jacked. I think I'm in the top 10% looks, fitness, education, and finances. I'm still a relationship person. Now that I'm armed with RP knowledge, I know I'll just be fine, and thanks again. Well, bro, congratulations on you on turning things around for yourself. Now, that's great. You're, you lost all the weight and you're getting jacked in the gym, and that's awesome. Good for you. I'm sure it has had a positive ripple effect in your life, making you feel good. But no matter how jacked you are, how strong you are, how physically tough you are, that doesn't mean jack shit if you're weak and jello on the inside. So keep, uh, uh, I can't think of the word, keep absorbing this, this uh, content. Keep watching my shows, keep hearing all these stories, as well as other good channels out there, and improving yourself so that way then you're not taken advantage of again one day. Because if, again, it's great you're hitting the gym and you're, you're making yourself physically tough, but if you're not tough inside, you're going to be walked all over, and I think you know that. So good for you, and I'm glad the channel could definitely help you out. All right, guys, on to the main story. This guy says, uh, Hi, SSM. An old friend of mine just sent me a link to one of your videos that reminded him of my story and told me to send, you, send mine in too, so why not? I bet you that story was one that I just mentioned earlier, about the, the, a few weeks ago, about that guy who liquidated everything and got out of Dodge. It's probably that one. For most of your videos, I think I'm supposed to apologize for my English, although it was my first language. I've always been mediocre at grammar. I was 38 at the time, and my wife was 37, and we were together for 14 years and married for six. I see a notification from Tyrone scroll past that reads, I miss you, babe. Well, I knew what that meant but I really, really wanted to be wrong. I asked who Tyrone was, and she responds, just a friend. So uh, unless this dude's name actually was Tyrone, he's referring to obviously one of the bad boy types of gal cheats with Chatter Tyrone. So what's the problem here? She's talking to another dude, just a friend. How many times have I said, count, I said countless times, you're married, your wife shouldn't have male friends she hangs out with or talks to or anything like that. You're the number one guy in her life. And if she has a problem with that and labels you as insecure or trying to control her or some crap like that, no, 
Don't buy into it. You as a man, I'm sure, don't hang out with other women or talk to other women by texting and all that. So she shouldn't be either. The only exception is if it's a part of her job and she has co-workers and all that. And even then, it's a tough situation because in nowadays, everybody's going to communicate via text and after hours. And you have to obviously do your homework and pay attention to that. But other than that, and even then one has to question, she should be talking to or hanging out other dudes. It's just a recipe for disaster. Right here. Just a front. Anyway, I pretend to believe her and turn to make angry faces at the TV before she could see. I didn't believe her, but still need more proof to convince myself. I tried checking her phone to find out the pin code did not work. Normally, I would have just asked, but I didn't want her to delete anything if she didn't already delete the proof. So I had to wait until I could sneak past a sneak a peek over her shoulder when she thought I was just being when she thought she was being sneaky. After she falls asleep, I find the treasure trail of a naughty text between my wife and two other guys. So one guy is enough, it's two guys. And I guarantee you there's probably more than that you just didn't see. I take a bunch of screenshots thinking it's gonna mean anything it's gonna mean anything in divorce court, only to find out that we're in a no-fault divorce state. Gentlemen, for all you guys who are thinking about getting married one day, and I know there are plenty of you out there, whether you want to admit it or not, when you get married and wherever you decide to live, make sure you're in an at-fault divorce state at least to protect yourself. And of course, prenups, and she signs a prenup so she can't claim duress or anything like that. Take precautions. Or better yet, in today's world, don't get married. You don't have a relationship, have a relationship. Knock yourself out. You don't got to get married to her. Not in today's world with today's laws and the way that the gals behave in Sodom Gomorrah 2.0. It ain't worth it. Protect your bank account. Uh, luckily, we were renting at the time, so we wouldn't have to split the money. Unfortunately, we'll be splitting our bank and retirement assets uh, uh, evenly, uh, even though I contribute about 80% to our accounts. So this guy, as you're going to see, is going to have millions of dollars, and they're renting. Hey, you never know. Maybe they like to move around every so often. I don't know. That that part seemed a little strange to me. But you never know. Maybe they put all their extra money and invested it and all that. And just simply they like to hop around. I don't know. A day later, as I'm hitting the heavy bag, a friend asked me what's wrong. He could probably tell I was on the verge of tears. Anyway, I broke down and told my story. He asked how close I was to retiring and if I could just take the money and leave the country. Me and the wife had already been saving and planning on retiring early and leaving the country and switching citizenship to somewhere with cheaper taxes. When I looked into the U.S., when I looked into it, the U.S. only has access to your bank accounts for alimony and divorce if you use your social security numbers on the account, and even then only in certain countries. If you open an account in another country with a different passport and don't use the American identity, they can't take it. So in other words, you need to go to a different country, somehow get a different name and identity and all that. Well, that type of thing obviously is, well, illegal, so it's going to cost you a lot of cash to do that. But then again, this guy does have a lot of cash. Uh, one thing I ran into while researching retirement was citizenship via donation. Basically, you buy citizenship and a passport from a foreign country. So now rather than planning divorce, I went back up to, to planning my retirement. A few days later, I had a business trip for a week and came back with a nice tan. Kind of scary thing was, they didn't even take my ID, and the lady asked if I wanted to use my old name or wanted a new one. In total, it cost me about $300,000 for a passport with a new name. And I paid a lot. Of, I paid a bit extra to get a lifetime discount on my taxes. In other words, whatever country he went to, I found out that he could pull this off. If this is true, it cost him three hundred k to get a new identity in that country, so he can then transfer the money over and not have to be subject to uh, the U.S. coming after him for alimony or divorce or anything like that. If this is true. <coughs> A few weeks later, I had to go to another business trip and pick up my new passport. I went back home to cash out of all the accounts that I could. I had a Roth IRA, several 401ks, and a shared brokerage account. Now, when I first read this, I'm thinking multiple 401ks, but I looked it up and yes, you can have multiple 401ks from different jobs you may have had and stuff like that. It took two of the longest weeks of my life to sell off all the stocks and collect all the checks. When I got the last check in the mail, I immediately booked a flight to my new home. So we're definitely going the past year because now it would just be in your accounts. And yes, 
early withdrawals from the retirement accounts means taxes. But then again, if he got out of Dodge and another country, I guess, it changed his name, obviously he wouldn't get hit because he'd disappear. And I don't know. <coughs> I started going to work, I stopped by the bank and emptied our shared checking account before heading to the airport. I've been living on a tropical paradise ever since with our $3 million nest egg, and it's been growing ever since. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I didn't have access to collect my wife's IRA or her 401k, so she still had a pretty big, pretty uh, decent savings. Besides, we spent nearly, maybe $2,000 in bills per month. And her home, uh, home take-home pay alone was about $4,500. So she won't have problems paying her own bills. So obviously she was a higher earner as well, but she wasn't getting your mother load of the money, which is great. He says, although my car, my car is in both of our names when I left at the airport, so who knows how much that cost. Unfortunately, she's going to have to keep working and living frugally if she wants to retire before she's 60 years old. Hey, not your problem. You were obviously great to her, and you worked hard and made a lot of money, and she had a maid being with you, but she had to cheat with two dudes, if not more. I'm sure there were more. Who cares? I heard she called around trying to find anyone who knew my name and contact information. And the only people I know, people I let know, never told her. I heard she got pregnant at 39 years old, even though she never wanted to have kids. No one ever knew who the father was. Yeah, because there were so many guys that nobody knows, and that guy certainly didn't step up to the plate. She seemed to disappear from what I heard, and I and I figured she moved back in with her folks to have the grandparents help her with the baby. My friend had a better theory that whoever she claimed was the baby daddy didn't want to pay child support and made her disappear. Shit. Now, most people who hear my story laugh at me stealing my wife's money. I didn't steal. I took a cheating fee. That's a good way to call it. And anyone who thinks that I shouldn't, I should have let a cheater and lawyers clean me out in court, I hope you get cleaned, cleaned out one day and have to rebuild. To everyone else, just don't get married. Well, there you go. <clears throat> right then and there. So there, that's a quick one, guys. Now, again, truth is stranger than fiction. And sometimes these stories just seem a little too crazy to be true. But I give the benefit of the doubt by reading these stories. Like I said before, when I first read this, I'm thinking... Can you have multiple 401ks? Well, yes, you can have multiple 401ks. And is it possible 38 years old that whatever both their jobs were, they made a shitload of money, stashed it away, invested it, good to investing decisions, racked up a ton of money? Yeah, it's definitely possible. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it, it does happen. And they're playing retiring early. And so this guy obviously, and is it possible that he could have gone overseas and used, and spent 300K, like he said, to bribe to get a whole new identity in another country, passport the whole thing to disappear? Yeah, it's possible. And transfer it over into a different account under a new name, new number, whatever that happened to be? That's possible too. You just never know. But anyhow, if, if this is in fact true, Good for you, sir. Good for you for rating everything and getting out of there and not getting uh, torn apart in divorce court. And she got what she deserved, my opinion. So that's awesome. And we can all uh, ha uh, have a beer in your name for handling this right. So that would be a very good one to go over here, guys, and goes to show you how this guy definitely handled things well. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below and what you think about this. Let me know, guys, do you think this story is actually true? Do you think it's complete BS? Fair enough, comment, comment away. You just never know nowadays. And also, guys, you got a great story like to share, definitely email it to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just give me just some time to get to it. I definitely will want to get the chance. And this also goes for any questions you might have in the Ask SSMs or any crazy stories you come across for Reddit. You know, I could use for the They Did What channel or shorter stories I can use for the SSM clips. No matter what, there's always something that I can use, and I appreciate your time sending it in to me. Amateur sure like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.